Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. I guess there's two of me. Let's um, <laughs> let's fix that, Curtis, if you don't mind. Oh, are you hearing yourself twice? Well, I'm you know what? I'm hearing myself twice. But <laughs> happy Friday, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you joining us today. We're thrilled to share uh, like a really unique highlight, in fact, is a special monthly episode of of In the Loops, What to Watch. And this is our episode of all things of go-to guides for your musty shows, streaming content, and special movies. Hey, Whitney, um, here. I'm just going to say with the, feed, the feedback right now, it sounds like you're like an AI version of yourself <laughs> trying to be a human. Okay. Let's <laughs> get rid of one of me. Okay. I think we'll get that, we'll get that fixed. But um, uh, uh, say, hello, now? everyone. This is The Loop. And uh, yeah, really appreciate everybody who's joining us here live, you know, wherever you are. We love being here every week. And uh, in case you don't know, I'm Greg Nibbler. Um, I'm a tech reporter and I also uh, work for Fox 12 Oregon. I'm a reporter and anchor there. And uh, and we cover a lot of different things here on this show. But really, I focus on technology a lot of the times here for The Loop. And of course, we have Winnie with financial news. And today, though, is one of our special episodes that we'd like to do once a, once a month at least, where we talk about what to watch. And this is where we want to hear your feedback as well, because there are so many streaming services. There's so many things to watch out there. And we try to narrow it down. I've got a few choices that maybe you've watched, maybe you haven't, some things that you can maybe some things to look forward to. So we'll be covering those later on, but please feel free to drop in, uh, drop in the chat, whatever platform you're watching on and let us know uh, what you think as well. I know, I think Winnie's, Winnie's back now, actual Winnie, not AI Winnie. There she is. Uh <laughs> you know, I feel like that was part of that. That was like planned, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> That's the theme of today's show. <laughs> Well, well, hello, thank, you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, and welcome everyone to In the Loop with Winnie and Greg. It's so much fun to be here with Greg. And I know we have a whole bunch of fun things to sh share in terms of this is like our what to watch episode, our one of our favorite episodes of the month. For those of you brand new show, I'm Winnie Sun, longtime financial pro, CNBC council member, Forbes contributor, and of course host of Love Up, which can also be found on NASDAQ. Um Greg, it's been a busy week, and I'm so excited. I can't believe today's the first day of the month. Time is flying by. Yeah, it really is weird that it's already March. And I forgot that it was a leap year until yesterday. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's February 29th. Okay. Um, yeah, it is flying by. We're already in March here for uh, for 2024. But you know what? This is why I look forward to this here at the end of uh, at the end of every week because we get to uh, I get to join you, Winnie, and talk to everybody else and uh, and see how everybody else is doing. Amazing. I love that. Well, let's kick it off, let you know how the market's doing, and then we'll go right into the fun. Currently, some this is really good news. So this is a great way to end the week. Hopefully, this continues. The DAG's currently up 70 points. Uh, NASDAQ is up about 168 points, and the SP 500 is also up over 30 points as well. So hopefully it continues. The market isn't closed yet for a little bit, but we are hoping for some positivity. One thing I will kick off before I hand this over to Greg is I want to share a little bit of good news. In fact, there are now a record number of 401k millionaires in the year 2023. I guess so many people have been really seeing the light and really just putting away money towards their retirement and saving. In fact, this is now the highest level in nearly two years reported recently by Fidelity, just indicating that people, millennials, Gen Xers, you know, are just really making sure that they're saving uh, towards retirement boomers, of course, as well. So if you're in that position, just know that this is becoming quite the norm. So some good news. But on that sort of theory of good news, you know, Greg, this is one of my favorite episodes because I write down everything you say to watch and kind of like kicks off for the whole month. And so I'm really glad we're starting the first day. And we got there's a lot of fun things coming out this month for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Should we should we jump into him? 
please. That'd be <clears> great. All right. Well, we'll start off with this one, which I know uh, this isn't a surprise. You didn't expect this one coming, but today, actually last night, Dune part two is out. And this is something if you watch the first one, clearly we've been anticipating this for, I think it was three years. Dune part one came out in uh, 2021 and left, left you kind of with that cliffhanger. And now we get the second part of this. And this is a huge production. I mean, for those who don't know the history of Dune, I mean, it's, it's one of the most epic novels of all time. It's also a really long novel. Um, it, it has a whole bunch of other spinoffs that go with it as well. But uh, getting this adapted into a movie is has been, had a rocky past. There was one that was all right in the 80s. There's been a couple other attempts. This, though, is the first one, I feel like, with the huge budget. And uh, Denis Villeneuve, I always mispronounce his last name, the director who's, who's at the helm of this, did an amazing job with the first one. And this one, this one looks even better. And <clears throat> what we're going to be getting with this, if if you're, uh, there's, I don't want to spoil anything. You know, I know generally speaking where the story is going to go, but this is going to have a lot more action than the first one. All the special effects are amazing. You've got sandworms. You've got all kinds of stuff going on. And it, it's bringing this chapter of the story uh, to a close. And I cannot wait to go see this. I, I, um, I, I probably will go see this in an, in an IMAX type of theater as well just to get the full sound and experience and i this is something i can't wait to go see this i love this it looks amazing greg yeah, i mean it looks so good yeah i saw on netflix it said that dune was leaving soon so we rewatched it and we're like okay for someone who hasn't read the book i feel like you know you just were waiting for the second one so it's actually it's perfect timing that the new one is out and i'm with you i think watching this at imax would be an incredible experience yeah and I've heard that uh, Austin Butler, that was him there um, as the bald guy. Uh, I've heard that he's really good in this and terrifying as well. But uh, so like the acting's top notch. The special effects are top notch. The story is good. They've managed to condense this huge, huge novel into onto the film and um, and actually make it work. So I am uh, I don't know if I'll see it this week because I, I need to rewatch the first Dune. Just I want to get myself back in but you need like three hours this is a long movie by the way so uh so I, you know but budget some time for it but i will be seeing it very soon it's very exciting to see all these new stars too i just love yeah. it timothy is is like he's definitely had his moment because i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I Timothy totally... chalamet zendaya uh there's an is it pronounced Zendaya or Zendaya? I read something that she says it's Zendaya, but anyway, um, that's a side note. Uh, but yeah, there, there's some great, uh, great actors in this. Yeah, some great actors. And speaking of which, Greg, I'm going to build on your choice there because, like I said, I think Timothy Chamela is having his moment here for sure. He's like the next generation of exciting actors and actresses that we're excited to see. My choice is going to be Wonka. Uh, Wonka is on Max Streaming, and this is going to be coming on March 8th. Because So this is a really, really special month for those of you who are fans. You can watch this on HBO Max. Um, and, of course, you know, Wonka, building on the Willy Wonka story. Um, many people have been looking forward to. I think this is a great one to watch with your entire family. And it really talks about the young um, Willy Wonka and how he becomes sort of the greatest candy chocolate maker of all time having like those magical moments i don't know my kids are so excited about this um so the fam the this this film does co-star olivia coleman keegan michael k um hugh grant which is super cool right so i don't know i feel like you're gonna i think you're definitely loving this movie as well greg i'm guessing yeah i'm i'm definitely gonna watch it i haven't seen it yet <clears throat> i've got some friends who said that it's it's really good um I was, I was a little unsure when I first saw that this was coming out, but now that it's out and I've heard that uh, I've heard it's really good. Yeah. I'm, I will definitely be watching this as well. Yeah, it really yeah. is it's just a Timothy Chalamet show. That we I, I, it's his moment right now. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, to give you an idea how well this did in the box office, we're talking $600 million. So if you haven't wow. seen it, like I haven't seen it, I'm excited to see it at home for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be watching that one. Yeah. Excellent choice. Um, yeah. Like so. where, and, and this is a, and this is streaming. Where was it? This is streaming now on HBO Max. But I mean, we should probably talk about this, Greg. I don't know. Um, it's at HBO Max, so definitely see the movie. But 
there was also a story, Greg, I don't know if you saw, I think CNN covered it. Like this is sort of like a, the sad part of AI coming about. I guess there was this uh, company that created this whole Wonka experience and they were charging $40 a person for people to go in and use AI to make this website look amazing. And like you were thinking this would be almost like a Universal Studios experience but when they got there, I guess it was just like a warehouse with a couple of things and people what? Yeah. I think you said, right? They were just given a couple of jelly beans in the- like a, Yeah. Like the, so that's, yeah, the website had used AI to create all of, and there's kind of a, on the background there, that's a, one of the AI um, things printed out and just put on the wall. Yeah. The website made it look like it was this huge, like you mentioned, Universal Studios type of experience that, that these kids were going to go to. Instead, this is what they showed up to. It's a warehouse. You got a few candy canes, you know, a mushroom there, some things put on the wall. Definitely not as advertised. They had a couple of actors there and the actors had no idea when they showed up to work. Yeah. See, if you look at the website, that's what people thought they were going to, but that's so very clearly AI generated. But for some people, you know, they may not have thought about that or maybe they, they just accepted the fact that, okay, it's not going to be exactly like that, but this is just all AI artwork that's just put on there. And, uh, so sad. yeah, I mean, it, it is, nobody was hurt in it or anything like that. It's this, this person was just a scam artist basically. Um, and they think they did all get their money back. Uh, you know, there are, there are some videos of these kids clearly disappointed when they showed up to this, um, in a way though, maybe this will be a more memorable experience for them, you know, in some, in some way, but, uh, but yeah, they, they each got a couple of jelly beans and, I think it was a half a glass of lemonade is what they were were given. So disappointing to say the least, but that shows. That's like, as if like, you know, like that's, you don't expect that from an, a business. That's like something you expect if you're doing a school event and there's like a Wonka experience and that's kind of like understandable, but yeah, not at 40 some dollars a pop. No. 40 something dollars. And I think that, you know, the, 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 the power of AI now, Greg is so powerful that, um, you know, I guess this is just the beginning and these are things that we need to look out for. Yeah. Yeah. Just if you see something on a website, know that it's, you know, may not be as advertised or just try to look out. Though AI is getting very good to where it's hard to distinguish. That one was pretty easy to distinguish. Although still, you still wouldn't expect it to be something like this. Like what, yes, what it ended exactly. up being. I mean, this may be, yeah, this is a specific experience for, of, somebody just being a scam artist really when it comes yeah. down to it. But, uh, but yeah, that's um, there's a lot of videos out there. Some of the actors have now um, talked about it, about how, how weird the experience was. So there, there's a lot of videos out there. People want to follow up on this. It's so sad. I guess the actors didn't even get paid for it, but they stayed around to take care of the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They, they were, uh, they were not in on the, uh, the scam the side. Scam. They were hired as well. Um, yeah, this guy, this guy's, uh, got some really good, he did an entire TikTok, uh, recap of, of what he, what he went through and what it was like. And, uh, it's, he's very entertaining. <laughs> so if anything, this guy's having a moment now out of this as well. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty funny parts of it. Funny I'm just how, check it out. how mismanaged the thing was. Oh, but, well. Sorry for the kids. God, they got their money back. Maybe you can, can take that money and go see Dune if they're yeah. old enough to see well, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that, that may warp them more than this, but yeah. <laughs> but at least they can stream Wonka. So they can yeah. watch there. Uh, all right. I do have, uh, I have a couple more um, for streaming. And this one I want to put out here, just people are either fans of Larry David or they aren't. But if you are, Curb Your Enthusiasm on HBO or on Max, excuse me, is uh, has their supposedly final season out. They've said that a couple of times, I feel like, but this is season 12, <laughs> final season. Larry David, of course, creator of Seinfeld and our co-creator of Seinfeld with Jerry Seinfeld. And uh, this is, uh, if you've never seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, you probably want to watch some of the previous uh, seasons to get an idea of it. It's basically a mockumentary about Larry's life where you fo they follow him around. And um, he's... He's a curmudgeon. Um, he gets annoyed by a lot of things. It's if you like Seinfeld, there's a lot of Seinfeld elements in here. It's a lot of George from Seinfeld because that's pretty much who Larry is. 
it, it, it's him and then it's celebrity friends and the, a lot of people are playing themselves uh, ted danson it plays what plays himself in this as well and uh it's if you are a fan of curb your enthusiasm this season so far is everything you'd want it to be all the awkward moments that you get from it but one thing so right there is richard lewis so richard lewis stand-up comedian He's been in a ton of things over his huge career, and he's always been in this as Larry's best friend and sometimes <laughs> enemy. And uh, he just passed away this week, Richard Lewis did. So okay. it's, um, you know, it's a little bittersweet uh, that uh, that this season is out right now, right? And he, and he just passed away. And they mm -hmm. just did an episode where they made fun of each other, putting each other in, in each other's will. So it's just kind of, you know, weird timing on that. Um, but yeah, so RIP to Richard Lewis, very, very funny. And this season though is, it's great. It's great. I so if it. you, if you are a fan of Curb and didn't know that the 12th season's out, it's out there. Well, another one at HBO. Very cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Greg. Yeah. That's what, that looks like fun. Was, I mean, Seinfeld was like, like legendary back in the day. Right. So yeah, this is like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it, they're very Seinfeld elements on, in this. Feel good, hang out, don't think too hard, that yeah. type of program. I feel like we need a little dose of that in your life anyway. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Greg, for sharing that. Okay, my next one is one that I'm very excited to share um, to, for many of you. And I know many of you out there are Swifty fans. And if you're not, you might be Travis Kelsey fans. And if that's the case, this is even more reason for you to know what's happening. Now, many of you know Taylor Swift legend, right? Now, the Eras Tour, I know many of you have been to the tour in person, but those of you who weren't able to do the tour in person, maybe you went to the theater experience when you saw this. Um, but if you didn't do that, well, get this. Now you can see it on Disney Plus. All right. The on March 15th on Disney Plus, you're going to be able to see Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour concert film official like release on Disney Plus. This is something that I think a lot of Swifties I've seen online talking about how they're just going to put it on replay every day of the week. So I think this is going to give you even more of an appreciation for just the amazingness up to Taylor Swift how hard she works, her talent, her songs, and putting it all in one. Let me just say, like, I don't even know that many of her songs, but I am a Swifty fan because I'm just impressed by what she's built and the her reputation of just kindness and taking care of her fans. And I know, I'm excited yeah. to see this. I'm excited to see this on Disney Plus. I'll probably watch this with the kids. Yeah, I mean, there's no denying how impressive Taylor Swift is and just mm -hmm. all of her success and you know, she's earned everything, everything that she's getting. I will say, you know, I don't know if I'm going to sit down and watch the entire Eras concert. That may not mm -hmm. be my thing, but the production value in this is incredible. I have seen, you know, while, like even just watching this trailer, but I've seen parts of her, her other shows, um, that, that other one that was streaming. I mean, and the set changes and everything, how they, how they are able to have all this elaborate work, stage work going on. It's really, really impressive. And the fact that she, what she sings for like three hours or something like that I yeah, mean, three or four hours yeah that's crazy like it's and dancing the and amount of all that stuff like how good of shape you'd have to be in to do that i mean that's that's incredible i mean yeah. i did read that in order to practice for her show she she was rehearse the entire thing while on a treadmill yeah and just do the entire show so um yeah you got to be in really good shape but yeah that's it's gonna break probably streaming records well, I mean, it bro broke movie records, right? At, um, yeah. when it, like you could rent your own private thing. And then, I mean, and of course, how many tickets she sells on her tours. As a, yeah. This is exciting, though, because I do think, like, what I like about the Taylor Swift story is if you, you followed, like, her, like, from when she was younger, she used to sit and take time to, like, like literally – I guess, deliver packages to some of her fans. And even to this day, she even, um, you know, she tells her security guards to like be gentle with different fans. I, I mean, she just seems like a really great person. And I don't know, I think it's great to have young people uh, feel this way and having that work ethic. She always said she knows people pay a lot of money to go see her shows. And so she tries to del out deliver what they expect to give them even more. And I love that sort of um, that feeling of wanting to make sure that you you do right with the people that you serve. So yeah. really cool. Oh yeah, I mean, and just when she gave everybody on her uh, 
staff like bonuses and I think mm -hmm. it was all the truck drivers, like a hundred thousand dollar bonus. And yeah. 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 No, she seems like a really good person and having a, you know, she's the biggest pop star in the world. Yeah. So this, this person uh, probably had good parents. So yeah. Love that. Although I guess I heard that her dad is under investigation for punching a cameraman. <laughs> yeah, I saw but something I'm about that. There was reason to that. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, look, those guys get pretty pushy. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine after after a certain amount of time, you're going to be like, get that camera out of my face. And I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm saying I can might be able to understand his sentiment in, right. <laughs> in, in that. Um, awesome. Well, that's a really good one. Well, I've got, a, I've got another one that's, this is something, um, if you are watching from the UK, you may have already seen this, but it is now out here in the US. And uh, and there's a reason I'm bringing this one up because there's also something that just came out yesterday associated with this. So this, it's called The Tourist. And this is a series on Netflix that you can watch. Um, I I started watching it because I saw Stephen King post about it and said that who who said that he watched the first episode and he thought it was brilliant and uh, and was really intrigued by it. Um, wait a minute, that's did I give you the wrong trip? <laughs> I'm like, you know I'm what? Impressed. That's my fault. You know, we're, uh, I'm just gonna admit this. I gave Curtis the wrong trailer to play. I gave him the tours of the movie, not the uh, and not the um, streaming show. So my bad. Uh, and there <laughs> it is, Curtis. There we go. There's the right there one. Thank you, Curtis, behind the scenes for saving the day on that. Uh, I was like, Johnny Depp is not in this. So there we go. There's the right trailer. So this this movie is essentially about, it, it takes place in Australia. And it's this guy who gets into a car accident and he wakes up in the hospital and doesn't remember anything at all. But then all these strange things start happening. There are people after him. He doesn't know why. He doesn't know his name. He doesn't know, remember where he came from. And so it's him trying to piece together his life. And a little clue will show up here and there. Um, he'll kind of remember something, but not really. And he has to go kind of trace back and, uh, and figure out what his, what his life is. And so it's a, it's a mystery. It's not one for kids. I'll say that. However, um, if you are into that kind of a, that kind of a show, a mystery where, you know, at the end of every episode, it's like, wait a minute, who is that now? And he finds out something different about what his past is and why these people are after him. It's really entertaining. And the the full the whole first season is out. The second season is now out as well as of yesterday on Netflix. So if you really want to get into it, you can binge two entire seasons. I haven't watched the second season yet because, it, like I said, it just came out. But I am definitely looking forward to checking that out this weekend. But if you haven't taken the time to watch The Tourist and you're into these kinds of shows, maybe Breaking Bad ish, uh, this one's really good. It's it's really entertaining. I love it. This looks really good. This looks like something I could do my workouts with. Cause it yeah, it'd be a good workout show. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Well, for sure. okay, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much, Greg. And by the way, I just want to say that I feel like what you shared earlier, um, Johnny Depp, Angeline Jolie, for those of you are watching, and I want you to name that movie. What movie was it that we accidentally saw? For those of you, I see Vicky joining us on Facebook. I see uh, CrossX Fighter joining us on YouTube Live. Um, I know that CrossX Fighter is not a fan of Taylor Swift. I see that his comments <laughs> are in. And um, yeah, and I see that like it looks like Vicky is talking about Wonka. And, and CrossX Fighter says he's definitely going to be watching Wonka. So very cool. So we would love to see your thoughts of that. And, and so bonus for all of you who are watching, what was that video? that video clip up, which movie was it up? Okay. Um, now my last one is going to be one. And of course, thank you for Curtis for helping me find this is Spaceman. Spaceman is streaming on Netflix. I know many of you are Netflix fans. This is available as of today. So you'll be able to watch it. And let me just say, who doesn't love Adam Sandler? Maybe you don't, but I love Adam Sandler. He's so fun. And this is a sci-fi movie. This, unfortunately, parents, is rated R. So probably not something you're going to be watching with your kids. But let's just talk about Deep Space, right? Adam Sandler, who is, his 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 name is Jacob, discovers this, like, giant, spidery, alien thingy merjigger. And, you know, he becomes his, like, like, friend or traveling buddy or companion. And so they have all these philosophical conversations. This is going to be funny. I mean, Adam Sandler is funny, right? So they talk about bacon. 
yeah, I got you <laughs> bacon. And so the and it, and so there's things that apply to his his wife, who is uh, Lincoln, who is played by Carrie Mulligan, who's also a great talent. So I don't know, I'm looking forward to this. I just love. I just think that Adam Sandler just makes me smile. It's like funny. Yeah, um, I am. I will definitely be watching this because it's got space. Number one, <laughs> that that's that's usually all the hook that I need. Uh, but then also, you know, Adam Sandler is, well, I, I also like Adam Sandler a lot. So, um, so yeah, I will definitely be watching this one. I just was watching the trailer earlier before we did this show. I'm like, okay, I can't get sucked into this right now, but I, I will be watching it uh, this weekend. I'll end up watching it this weekend. Although now I've got a huge list of things to watch this weekend. So something's going to fall by the wayside. I do want to watch this one though. March yeah. is awesome, Greg. I feel like there's so much fun to see this month. There's a lot um, of good stuff out there. Um, yeah, there really are. And I do have one more. And actually, this is still Netflix really knocking it out of the park this month. Cool. This is another series that's that has been out there. But this is I feel like it's getting its new um, a new resurgence because it came to Netflix. And it does have a little space tie into it. It's called Resident Alien. And it stars Alan Tudyk, which if you Alan Tudyk's that guy. So he's one of those, maybe you don't know Alan Tudyk's name, but you've probably seen Alan Tudyk in something. And uh, there he is. And he is playing, the, the, basically the premise is, he's an alien. He crash lands on Earth um, through some reason. Uh, they, they go in, they start explaining that. And then, but it, so he has to mask himself as a human while he's stuck here. And so he takes over the identity of this guy who was a doctor in the town. And so everybody thinks he's that guy and he's a doctor, but really he is an alien. He doesn't understand how things work. And so he's trying to interact. Yeah, there he is, what he actually looks like. Um, and he's trying to integrate himself into the community, but he he is also has different a different way of going about the world and and solving things than than obviously uh what humans do. So it's it's pretty entertaining so far. And like I said, because it's Alan Tudyk, he's so good that uh that i've been really enjoying it so far uh so far watching it and there's a few seasons of it that you can watch so if you want to try something you haven't before um and you haven't seen this before this is a good time to get into it and and if you like it like i said you, i think you've got like three seasons to check out and this is on netflix this is on netflix it's streaming very on Netflix. cool yeah very fun i i think i'm gonna definitely check this out um yeah and i see comments coming in greg got lots of comments coming in um vicky says that definitely will give this a watch for sure and then cross x fighter is saying that he used to watch um a lot of adam sandler movies and yes he is absolutely hilarious so okay yeah. so greg i don't know do you know that movie that we accidentally streamed earlier so people i, can know? I do I realized where my mistake was. So I was talking about the tourist, the TV show. That was the tourist, the movie, uh, with with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. Um, not what I was intending to put in there, uh, but what what uh, I put there. So I can't remember when that movie actually came out. I vaguely have a remembrance of that. Oh, uh, 2010. Hey, yeah. a bit I don't know where you can stream that, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. <laughs> revolves it's around Frank, an American tourist visiting Italy to mend a broken heart. Elise is an extraordinary woman who deliberately crosses his path. Oh boy, there we go. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh, options, man. same name. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie daisy. Um, and speaking of which, I'm just going to say for those of you who are with us for what to watch last month, have you seen Airbender? It was. It is so good. I finally finished it. Just saying, if you haven't seen that, still on Netflix, I would absolutely watch that as well, especially if you have kids. Yep, still need to add. I still haven't watched that one yet either. So yeah, I've so got a have, lot of stuff to watch. Yeah, like I, I'm. Airbender was so good. I'm just gonna say. Yeah. So, so, yeah. We'll definitely check that out. So I don't know, Joshua, if you saw it, and I don't know, Vicky, you saw it, but definitely check it out. Yes, Curtis is saying tourist movie came out in 2010. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. And most of, most of all, thank you so much, Greg, for so many great ideas. I've written them all down and now I know what to watch this month. Yeah. And thanks everybody. Like you, like you mentioned for joining us. Um, and yeah, witty, thank you for the recommendations as well. And if anybody else has some, of course, always make sure to, to drop those in or tag Winnie or I on social media, on, on whatever platform you're on, we're on there. And uh, yeah, just appreciate, you know, wrapping up the week with everybody like this.
Absolutely. It's such a treat. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you so much. Big thank you to CrossX Fighter and Vicky for all your comments and supporting our show. Truly, truly grateful. And we're looking forward to seeing you again next week. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>